Hi, I'm Matthew Steele. Um, let's talk about Speedy. Um, so I work on Google's uh, Make the Web Fast team, and I'm the primary author of Mod Speedy, which I'm going to be talking about today. Um, can I get a quick show of hands? How many of you are like pretty familiar already with the Speedy protocol? Some hands. How many of you are not so familiar with it? Okay, I will. Um, I will give some introduction. So Speedy is uh, a new protocol. It's, it's been around for a few years now, but newish. Uh, that was designed with the explicit goal of making the web faster, making pages load faster. And uh, essentially, it's sort of a session layer protocol. It fits in on top of uh, secure TCP, and then on top of Speedy, you can layer other protocols, mainly HTTP, HTTP, but potentially other things. And uh, Speedy does a few things for you sort of automatically. So the biggest thing that it does is it allows you to multiplex uh, multiple independent, concurrent, interleaved uh, HTTP streams over a single TCP connection. Uh, and this turns out to have huge latency wins in terms of saving on round trips and using the network more efficiently. Um, Speedy also does a couple of other things. Uh, it gives you header compression. So with plain HTTP, right, you know, all your request and response headers are sent sort of plain text. Um, and uh, you send the same stuff over and over again for every request. So with Speedy, all that gets compressed uh, with gzip um, or possibly something else in the future. Um, and that gets compressed across requests. So if you send similar headers, you know, the same cookie, same user agent, uh, over and over again for each request, over time that shrinks down very small and again uses the network much more efficiently. Um, Speedy uh, also, so multiplexing header compression, uh, request prioritization. So because of the multiplexing, even though you've only got a single TCP connection, uh, the client can make many requests, even, you know, 100 requests all at once. Um, simultaneously, and the server can respond to those in any order or interleave the responses. Um, so Speedy also has this prioritization feature where the client can make all the requests, but it can tell the server, you know, these are the important ones, these ones are less important. So do these important ones first, but if those get stuck, you know, maybe one of them is blocked on some backend database call uh, and gets stuck in the middle, that's fine. You know, do something, send something to me, send to me something lower priority. But uh, you know, once the higher priority thing gets unstuck, then stop what you're doing, go back to the high priority thing, send the rest of that, and then, and then move on down the line. So this lets the client you know, be very explicit to the server exactly what it wants. You know, I want all these things, I want them in this order, and the server does its best to use the pipe efficiently. Uh, and the last thing is this feature called server push. So with HTTP, the server has no way to send data to the client unless the client actually asks for it. Uh, and when you think about it, it's, it's sort of a little silly, right? If the browser requests H an HTML file, the server knows full well the very next thing the client is going to do is ask for like the first JavaScript file in the HTML, but the server just sits there for an entire round trip while this response goes back down to the client and the request comes back up to the server. And if the server knows the client needs it, why doesn't it just send it right away? And then by the time the client knows it needs it, it'll already be there. Um, there are some caveats there. Obviously, maybe the client already has it in cache. Um, so there's some issues here, but you can sort of think of server push as being a lot like resource inlining, but uh, better and more flexible. Um, so those are sort of the core things that Speedy gives you, and uh, you know, again, it's it's all geared towards um, uh, making pages load faster on the web, uh, using the network more efficiently, uh, saving on round trips, um, which uh, is a big deal, especially on mobile, where bandwidth is limited and round trips are very expensive. Um, all right, this all sounds great, hopefully. Is anyone actually using this thing? Yes. Uh, client side, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, both desktop and mobile for all of those support it, as does the Android browser. Uh, so right, by browser market share, that's over half of all users are using a speedy capable browser. So if you go home today and you uh, add speedy support to your site, you know, your site will instantly get faster for you know, roughly half of your users. That's something to think about. Um, server side, there's support in, um, for Apache using Mod Speedy. Um, there's also support uh, either in beta or, or full support in uh, Nginx, Jetty, Node.js, probably some others I'm not aware of. Uh, in terms of big players that are using this, Google, Akamai, Facebook, Twitter, WordPress.com, probably other ones. So this is gaining a lot of traction. Um, it's a big deal. Um, and just to give you an idea of what's coming Speedy-wise, uh, so Speedy 3 is sort of the current version. Uh, Speedy 4 is on its way soon. Uh, it has some new improvements to the protocol that make it even more efficient, uh, better header compression, better, smarter prioritization, some more push features, uh, you know, lots of things to make it better. Um, 
More importantly, though, um, the IETF is talking now about HTTP 2.0 and forming that standard. Uh, and I'm not part of that group. I talk to some people who are. Uh, and as I understand it, they're using Speedy as a starting point. So uh, HTTP 2.0 probably won't look exactly like Speedy, but a lot of the same features there, particularly multiplexing, are going to be there. Um, so everything I'm telling you today about Speedy, you should be thinking, this is the future of the web. This is what's coming. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that uh, um, Apache is going to need to support, um, the Apache web server is going to need to support uh, to, um, to keep up with the next HTTP standard. Uh, so mod Speedy. So this is a third party Speedy module uh, that we developed. Uh, it's free open source software, Apache 2 licensed. Um, uh, it's been out now for a little less than a year, first launched in uh, April of 2012. Uh, today it's got support, full support for Speedy 2 and Speedy 3. Once Speedy 4 spec is done, then we'll support that too. Um, it's a drop-in module. Uh, just install it. It works with your existing server configuration, all your existing modules. Uh, uh, install it and your, you know, your Apache server immediately speaks Speedy. Uh, and you can build it from source or we've got binary packages for um, Debian and Red Hat. So uh, with that introduction, I want to talk a little bit more in depth about how Mod Speedy works. Um, and in order to work, in order to support Speedy and Apache, there's basically four things it needs to be able to do. And I'm going to go over each one of these in detail, sort of what this is and then how, what Mod Speedy needs to do to support it. Um, and some of these are going to be a little bit uh, hacky. So you'll, you'll, you'll kind of get a little more gory detail. Um, I should say up front, I'm like a little bit intimidated by this group. I'm not an Apache expert. In fact, Mod Speedy is the first Apache module that I have ever written. Um, so maybe I will tell you about some of these things and some of you will tell me that I could be doing these in a much better way and I would love to hear that feedback uh, at the break. Um, so let's go into each one of these. So the first thing is um, this thing called Next Protocol Negotiation or NPN. So NPN is a TLS extension. This is not something that's specific to Speedy. Um, so this is a new TLS extension. Uh, it's supported by recent versions of OpenSSL which means that if you build, uh, you know, mod SSL with a recent enough version of OpenSSL, then that support will be in there fundamentally. And uh, basically the way this works is that during the SSL handshake, three-way handshake, uh, there is some additional data that gets sent by server and client in order to agree on, once we've got the secure channel open, what protocol are we going to use? Um, so the, the, you know, the client sort of sends the first phase of the handshake, and then when the server sends back its certificate, uh, it also sends back this NPN data where the server lists each of the protocols that it supports. So HTTP 1.1, Speedy 2, Speedy 3, maybe something else. And then in the final phase of the handshake, the client also sends back uh, a little piece of data indicating which of those protocols it wants to pick. And now the secure connection is open, and as soon as it's open, both endpoints have already agreed on which protocol to use. And if it's Speedy or something else, they can immediately start spending that data and know that the other endpoint will understand them. Um, and if either endpoint sort of is older or doesn't understand NPN or something goes wrong, it just falls back to HTTP 1.1 by default. So this is uh, very nicely backwards compatible. Um, now some of you might have already realized this means that Speedy only works over SSL. Um, there's also some other deployment reasons for that, um, and that is an unfortunate limitation. Um, but that's the current situation. As I understand it, uh, as an aside, uh, with HTTP 2.0, there. Uh, talking about some other possible upgrade mechanisms that could avoid that limitation so that hopefully HTTP 2.0 will be able to work uh, in places where you don't want to use SSL. Um, but for now, Speedy is SSL only. Um, so, but NPN is this nice extension that means as long as you're doing this SSL, SSL handshake anyway, you get to do this negotiation and get both endpoints on the same page without any extra round trips. So that's nice. So how do we support this? Um, Oh, I should have gone over these earlier. Right, okay, so just, again, to give a, a quick overview of what it looks, you've got your client, you've got your server, the client says hi, the server says here's what I support, and the client picks one. That's sort of NPN in essence. Um, so this is one thing I, unfortunately, we couldn't do purely in mod speedy. We needed some cooperation from mod SSL. Uh, so open SSL supports NPN, but we need some way to hook into that. Um, so what we went ahead and did is, is added some new capability to mod SSL. We essentially added two new uh, hook functions, you know, sort of uh, uh, APR optional hooks. Uh, the first one basically goes out and asks modules, please tell me what modules, what uh, protocols you su should support that I should advertise to the client. And then the second one reports back once the client has chosen one. 
And so mod speedy uses these hooks, and of course other models could use these hooks too. So let's kind of see what it looks like. So we've got a client, we've got an Apache server with several modules in it, and the client says hi. And then ModSSL fires off that first hook. So it asks, you know, we've got mod speedy, some sort of hypothetical mod foo that supports the foo protocol. And it asks them, you know, what they support. So mod speedy says, well, I support speedy two and speedy three. Mod foo supports foo 1.1. And uh, mod SSL with these, with, with this addition will pull all those together, send them back to the client. The client picks one, say they pick speedy two. And then that second hook fires. So uh, um, mod SSL informs mod speedy and mod foo that speedy two was selected. And mod speedy says, great, I'll do my thing. And mod foo says, oh, that's not me, I'll get out of the way. Um, so those changes to mod SSL have been committed to trunk, they're in there. Um, obviously, unfortunately, not everyone has a completely up-to-date trunk build of uh, Apache. So for the benefit of uh, older installations, if you install mod speedy today using the binary package, it will install a updated mod SSL for you so that it has access to those hooks. Um, if for some reason you don't want that and you want to uninstall it, if you just uninstall the mod speedy binary package, it will put everything back for you and restore your original mod SSL. So it's nice and clean. Um, but that just makes it much easier to install mod speedy and make sure that uh, you have access to those hooks. Um, so with those additions to mod SSL, we've got um, hooks into NPM so we can negotiate to use speedy. Uh, and so the next thing we need to do is to actually read and write speedy frames. Um, uh, to, so do the speedy framing layer and um, deal with the speedy header compression, right? The compression across multiple requests. Um, so this one's actually easy, right? This is a perfect use case for HTTP's filter chain, right? You know, conceptually we just, uh, mod speedy just inserts filters to translate from speedy data to HTTP data on the input side and the reverse on the output side. Great. And um, we, uh, we do this at the connection level. We, it's a connection filter rather than a request filter so that we can maintain this compression state across multiple requests on the same connection. Um, and all, that means all our existing modules just see the decoded HTTP data and they work the same as before. So this is great, right? Easy. Um, we're actually about to see that that's not quite what mod speedy does because of complications of how it does multiplexing, but that's the basic idea. So next up is multiplexing and this is the hard one. So when I first started doing mod speedy, I was told that uh, it could not be done. Uh, there was no way to get speedy working in the Apache web server, and this is why, uh, multiplexing. Um, so to see why this is hard, um, I'm gonna go a little more into detail about how request and connection handling normally works in the Apache web server, you know, without mod speedy. Um, so let's kind of take a look at how this works. We have our NPM, uh, and it's sitting there with its server socket listening for incoming connections. Okay, some connections come in, we've got a bunch of client sockets bound to those remote addresses. Um, and each one of those gets a connection object, right, a structure representing the TCP connection and it gets filled in with all that data. And the NPM assigns each one of these to a separate thread or process depending on the NPM, um, right? So each one of these connection objects and its associated socket has a dedicated thread or process that is responsible for that connection and it will take care of that connection and when it's done, the thread can terminate. Uh, you know, or go back into the thread pool rather and, and uh, you know, pick up something else. So let's look at just one of these at a time, keeping in mind that there's other copies of this you know, going on concurrently. So the NPM now has a, uh, a thread or process assigned to this connection. We've got the connection object and its associated socket. And then the NPM will run the uh, AP process connection function. So the first thing this function does is it calls the pre-connection hook. So the core module in uh, HTTPD will uh, insert the network level filters into the filter chain that will talk to the socket. Uh, mod SSL, assuming you've got that, uh, and assuming that this is, uh, you know, over an SSL port, uh, will use the pre-connection hook to install its uh, connection level SSL filters that will do decryption and encryption on the output side. Um, and once all the pre-connection hooks are done, AP process connection will call the uh, connection handler hook. And that will go out asking, looking for a module that will uh, take over this connection and take responsibility for doing all the processing on this connection until it's done. Uh, in most cases, obviously, that's going to be the HTTP connection handler that's built into uh, Apache. So that connection handler now takes over control of the thread. It starts pulling data through the, um, 
uh, connection filter chain through Modest SSL and through the network, and it parses out the first HTTP request that comes over the wire. Okay, so now we've got this request object. Now the connection handler calls a bunch more hooks. Other modules get a chance to put in their request filters. They get a chance to select an appropriate request handler for this particular request. Now the request handler takes over the thread. It starts pulling data through this long filter chain, processes the request, produces a response. The response goes back through the filter chain, back out to the network. And once the request is done, control then gets yielded back to the connection handler. And if we've got keep live on, which we probably should, uh, then we can maybe process a second request on the same connection. Everyone with me so far? So this works great for HTTP. It doesn't work so great for Speedy. And the reason is that all along this route, we've been assuming that we've got one thread and one connection and one request at a time. And that's true for HTTP, but it's not true for Speedy, right? With Speedy, we've got um, you know, one TCP connection that's got lots of requests going on concurrently. Uh, and if we want concurrency, maybe we need to have those on separate threads. So how could we possibly do that? Well, let me make two observations about how Apache works. The first observation is that once that request handler takes over, right, and remember that request handler might be in some third party module that, you know, isn't in core and that we can't easily change. Once the request handler takes over, it doesn't yield control back until the request is finished. Okay, what that means is that if we're in the middle of that request, there's no way to sort of stop what we're doing in the middle, go do something else for a while on the same connection, and then come back and finish that request, right? This, re this request handler has full control, you know, control of the thread until it's done. So there's sort of no way to munge this into being event-driven in some way, uh, and, and sort of switching context between requests uh, on a single thread, uh, just because of Apache's architecture. That's fine. Um, so we may need to be multi-threaded. Observation number two, though, is that deeply baked into Apache is this idea that there's one thread per connection, and there's a one-to-one -one association between these. And so all those core data structures, in particular the connection data structure, isn't thread safe, right? There's no locking. Why would there need to be? Because every connection object has a dedicated thread that's responsible for it. So we can't be event-driven, but we can't be multi-threaded either. Um, and as I said, this is why uh, I was told there was no way to make speedy work in Apache. Um, so how do we do this? The answer is that we cheat. This is what we're going to do instead. Um, so let me go back a ways just a little bit earlier in the process. Um, we've, uh, you know, we've received a bunch of connections. Uh, we've ran the pre-connection hook and inserted all these filters, and now it's time to pick a connection handler. So the first thing that ModSpeedy does is it hooks into the uh, connection handler hook it asks to be run before the HTTP connection handler, so it has a chance to see if this is a speedy connection. So the speedy connection handler runs. The first thing that it does is uh, it performs a speculative read of one byte, basically just to force the SSL handshake to happen, make sure SSL is all initialized, and that will force NPN to happen if it's going to happen. So if it's not speedy is not selected, then the speedy connection handler will return declined to get out of the way, and the HTTP connection handler can do its thing as normal. If speedy is selected by the client, then the speedy connection handler takes over and it starts pulling data off the network and uh, reading and decoding speedy frames. So the client is going to send, um, right, so speedy has this framing layer where, where everything is broken up into chunks labeled with stream, and so the client will send a bunch of frames indicating that it wants to make a bunch of simultaneous requests. So we get those, and the speedy connection handler in mod speedy will create a, a structure, a speedy stream object representing each of these streams that we need to handle concurrently. So we already kind of ruled out any kind of event driven scheme. So we're going to put each of these on its own thread. And so mod speedy maintains its own thread pool. Basically, mod speedy acts like a little NPM uh, of its own. So it puts each of these speedy streams on a dedicated thread that can run concurrently. So again, let's look at just one of these at a time, but remember, there's you know, multiple of these running all concurrently um, in mod speedy's thread pool. So what are we gonna do with the speedy stream? Well, we already determined that each, what we really wanna do is handle a request, right? A single request on the speedy stream. But we already determined that each request needs to have an associated connection object that other third party modules handling the request can look at. So we're gonna need to make a connection object. So we make one. Obviously, it doesn't represent a real TCP connection, and in fact, it doesn't have any socket. Uh, we just created a structure, fine. Um, as it turns out, in order to keep uh, the Apache core happy, uh, we can't just set the socket to null, so we have to put something there. Um, so we actually just sort of make this fake socket that isn't bound to anything, uh, which is gross, 
but it works. Um, so we've got this socket that isn't bound to any port and doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and now we've got this connection object. Great, what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna call AP process connection. But that's a core private function, you tell me. Well, this is C, and if you can forward declare it, you can call it. So we do. So we call it like we were the NPM, and we, that goes ahead and calls the pre-connection hook. So the pre-connection hook fires. Modest SSL wants to do its thing. Modest SSL hooks into the pre-connection hook with priority APR hook middle. So it's gonna run fairly early on and try to insert its SSL filters. We don't want it to do that because that's just gonna add extra complication, right? There's no reason to have encryption in this fake connection that's not going anywhere, that's in the middle of uh, our server. Um, fortunately, for reasons I'm not entirely clear on, uh, Modest SSL provides an APR optional function that allows you to explicitly disable it on a connection by connection basis. Maybe someone here knows why that's there. So uh, great, that's good for us. So ModSpeedy also has its own pre-connection hook that hooks in explicitly just before Modest SSL and explicitly tells Modest SSL, please don't touch this connection, just get out of the way. Um, so the pre-connection hook uh, moves on and now the Apache core module wants to install its network filters to talk to its, this socket, just like it normally would, because it has no idea that this isn't a real connection off the network. Uh, so it's gonna install its network filters. Well, we definitely don't want it to do that and try to talk to this socket that doesn't go anywhere. Um, so what are we gonna do about that? Well, the core module's pre-connection hook runs with priority APR hook really last. It's the very last thing that runs in the pre-connection hook. So ModSpeedy has another pre-connection hook function that hooks in just before that one. And that pre-connection hook function returns done. So some of you may remember, some, although not all, Apache hook functions allow you to return done, which basically means I took care of everything. Don't run any more hook functions for this hook. Just stop. Um, this is obviously critical for something like a connection handler or request handler hook, where the first handler uh, function that is able to handle it should take care of everything and then none of the other handlers should do anything, right? I have no idea why this, uh, why the pre-connection hook also allows you to do this. Again, I'm sure there's some reason. I don't know what it is. Maybe one of you does. But I'm sure glad it's there. So uh, mod speedy returns done. So. The core module doesn't insert the network filters. I hope that goes okay for you. Um, so the pre-connection hook is done. AP process connection then looks for a connection handler. Speedy uh, politely steps out of the way and lets the HTTP connection handler take over. So it's going to try reading from the filter chain and parsing an HTTP request as normal, uh, which would be fine if there were any filters to read from. Uh, so how is it going to do that? So in one of those earlier uh, pre-connection hooks, ModSpeedy inserts some filters of its own at the network level where the network filters that talk to the socket would normally be. But instead of talking to the socket, they talk to the speedy stream object, which is connected via a thread safe queue back to the master thread that's been up there all this time. Hey, what's the master thread doing? So while all these speedy stream threads are doing this, this, all this complicated hook shenanigans, the master thread is continuing to sit there, continuing to read data off the network and parsing speedy frames. And each speedy frame is labeled with the stream that it's supposed to be on, so it muxes those out and puts them onto the appropriate queues for each speedy stream object that it's keeping track of. And when the HTTP connection handler tries to pull data through the filter chain to parse an HTTP um, request, so it asks the speedy to HTTP conversion filter, hey, give me some data. The speedy to HTTP conversion filter goes to the speedy stream, pulls some um, speedy frames off of that queue, transliterates them to equivalent HTTP data, and then dumps those into the bucket brigade. The connection handler grabs that, happily reparses all that HTTP data into a uh, uh, HTTP request object, and then proceeds as normally, right? Fires all its hooks. All the existing modules get to insert their request filters in their connection handler, and it handles that HTTP request, produces a response, that goes back out through the filter chain, the core um, HTTP request filter, uh, serializes all those headers and things into HTTP data, which the HTTP to speedy conversion filter on the output side happily reparses, converts into speedy frames, puts back on the thread safe queue, sends it back to the master connection. All these frames from all these speedy streams go back to the master connection, which then demuxes them, compresses them all with the shared compression context, and puts them back out through SSL, back onto the wire, back to the client. And that's how ModSpeedy works. Any questions so far? Uh, some of you might have realized some possible problems this will cause, uh, and if so, uh, wait for a few slides from now when I will spell all those out. 
Um, so that's multiplexing. Uh, and once we've got that, actually server push is really easy. Um, so back in this picture, that uh, speedy to HTTP, actually the HTTP to speedy conversion filter that's parsing this HTTP data and translating it into speedy frames. While it's doing that, it's also looking at the headers that go by. And it looks to see if the uh, request handler decided to set an X associated content response header with some URLs that it would like to push. Um, uh, so if it sees that, then for each one of those URL, in URLs, in addition to all the speedy frames it's transliterating the HTTP into and sending, it also sends a speedy syn stream uh, server push frame uh, with minimal headers uh, out to the client. It basically just tells the client, hey, I'm about to push you something on a new stream that I'm creating. Um, so the stream thread does that, and then the stream thread, thread signals the master connection thread that's maintaining this thread pool, hey, I need you to initiate a new server push stream. So the master connection thread uh, you know, grabs a new thread out of the thread pool um, and creates a new speedy stream. Um, so how are we supposed to respond to a request that was never actually sent to us? Well, we just make one up. So we synthesize a new HTTP request and just pretend that the client sent to us even though they didn't really. And you know, it just is normal. We, we turn that into HTTP data, we send that off to Apache. Apache says, great, a new request off the network that the client totally just sent us. I'll respond to it. Uh, it does its thing, we turn that back into speedy and we send that back to the client. And the client, which understands speedy, says, oh, great, a push stream, I'll stick that into my cache and I assume I'll need it later. So those are the four things we said we needed, and now we're done. We have a speedy module. And go ahead and install that, and your Apache server will speak speedy. So there are some benefits and some drawbacks to how mod speedy works. Um, and uh, let me go over those. So the big benefit is that it works, right? Uh, I was told this couldn't be done uh, I think the people that told me that Speedy couldn't work in Apache were not giving Apache enough credit. Um, uh, Apache's module system and hook system is remarkably flexible, and the existing hooks that are already there, you know, I, I had to add these NPN hooks, because NPN's a new thing, but other than that, all the existing hooks into Apache's core served me extremely well. It turned out this was all entirely possible to do with actually not all that much skullduggery. Um, so it all works, that's pretty great. Um, the fact that we sort of do this weird uh, uh, fake connection thing uh, is a little squirrely. Um, we could have done loopback fetches, um, but basically I didn't want to do loopback fetches. It ties up ports, um, it has its own problems, you know, you might have to deal with weird access control things. Basically this, doing this thing, although it's a little more squirrely, guarantees that uh, you are going to respond to this speedy stream in exactly the same way you would have if it were a normal HTTP request coming in. And that was really my goal, right? I wanted speedy to be a drop-in module that uh, you know, supports speedy, but otherwise everything is going to behave exactly the same. You're gonna get the exact same results. You don't have to change your existing configuration. And so this gets us that, which is great. Uh, so it works with all your existing modules. You don't need to rewrite them. None of them need to know anything about speedy. You don't need to change your existing configuration, uh, mostly. Uh, I'll get to that two slides from now. Um, so this all works pretty well. Um, there are some drawbacks, and let me talk about those. So first, some what I think are relatively minor drawbacks. It does require an update to Modus SSL, uh, but other than that, it works even with sort of older versions of Apache. Um, so so Mod Speedy right now targets Apache 2.2. Um, one of these days, real soon now, I'm going to get around to uh, making it available for 2.4. Hopefully, that'll be in the next release. Uh, but for now, it's 2.2. Um, there is some of that overhead for sort of this double parsing. You may be wondering sort of, you know, well, you know, when we're turning speedy into HTTP, why don't we parse the speedy frames then just like directly create an HTTP request object instead of serializing the speedy out to HTTP data and then letting Apache reparse all that and then doing the same on the output side. Um, you know, we probably could have done it a little more efficiently, but again, you know, I wanted to make sure, really, really sure that we exactly replicated, you know, the semantics of the existing Apache core and that we didn't try to re-implement all the clever things that Apache does to, to deal with things like content length and all these weird HTTP headers and things. It already does that very well, but that uh, behavior is sort of tied up in um, the core module that deals with parsing and serializing HTTP. So we decided, I decided to just, you know, sort of let it do that. It's very good at it. Uh, and mod speedy will just sit a layer outside of that and that, you know, sort of makes sure it'll be stable, even if it's not, you know, quite as efficient as it maybe could be. Um, but that's not too bad, it's just string manipulation. There is uh, that slight breach of abstraction I mentioned earlier where we have to call a couple of core private functions. Um, yeah, it's not so bad, but it's not ideal. Um, and then of course, uh, 
Modspeedy has maintaining this thread pool, which means it's not going to play nice with modules that are not thread safe. Um, so even if you're using pre-fork, uh, if you're using mod speedy, your non-thread safe modules are, are going to break when you try to use them with speedy. Um, which is too bad. Um, there's sort of, I mean, there's not much we can do about it. Um, and, you know, especially as mentioned, was mentioned earlier today, you know, threaded NPMs, and particularly the event NPM, is sort of becoming the default. Um, so, and you know, there's not that many modules that are not thread safe, and the ones that aren't, in fact, not thread safe, many of them can already be worked around. You know, if, if, you're, if you're already using a worker or event um, and all your modules work fine, then they'll work fine with mod speedy. Um, there are some other drawbacks, though, that uh, unfortunately I do not know right now any way to work around. And if any of you have brilliant ideas on this, I would love to hear them. Um, so the first one is that this fake connection thing, although it's, uh, you know, it's clever and all, it really confuses mod SSL. And in particular, because we explicitly told mod SSL, no, no, don't touch this connection, turn yourself off for this connection, it says, great, that means that this connection is not being served over SSL. Which isn't really true, right, because it, that connection isn't a real connection to the network and all of that data for that connection is going back to the master connection, which is over SSL, and all that data is being encrypted before it's going onto the network. But mod SSL doesn't know that. Now normally that's fine, um, but if you happen to be using a, a couple of the stricter mod SSL uh, configuration directives, uh, in particular SSL require SSL, uh, which for those of you who don't know basically says don't ever ever serve this resource unless it's over SSL, no matter what else I screw up in my configuration, this should be secure only. And so if you're using that directive or a similar directive and then you try to use mod speedy, uh, mod SSL will say this isn't served over SSL even though it kind of really is. Uh, and that'll break things. Um, I would love to fix this. This issue has been open on our bug tracker since launch, basically. Uh, but I can't figure out any way to fix this without A, being extremely hacky and gross, and B, probably opening up some, you know, weird potential security hole somewhere, which obviously I do not want to do. Um, so I kind of want to touch, you know, muck with mod SSL as little as possible. I, you know, I don't want to compromise anything there. So unfortunately, uh, this bug remains open um, for the time being. Um, obviously, since we're, you know, every speedy stream is on its own thread, that means we're using a bunch of extra threads. Um, you know, and if you're, if you're uh, throttling your server, you say, oh, I can, I can handle 10 requests at once, so let's allow, allow 10 connections at once. Uh, you know, this will break that because now each connection can have 100 requests on it and that could mean lots and lots of threads. Um, so that's too bad. Again, there's sort of not much we can do about it. And mod speedy does let you tune the size of its thread pool. Uh, so you can, you can tune that to make sure you don't overwhelm anything. Um, to make that a little bit worse so that we're using all these threads, uh, remember that mod speedy sort of has to be its own NPM, manage its own thread pool, do all this stuff by itself, and that's a bad thing, right? The whole point of the NPM is that we have a single part of the server that's responsible for multiprocessing, um, and the fact that mod speedy sort of has to duplicate some of that effort is not good. Um, so that's definitely not ideal, and to make that even worse, um, because the NPM has no knowledge of these other threads that are running these other requests on these fake connections, that means that the NPM scoreboard uh, has no knowledge of the requests that are being served on speedy streams. Um, so if you're using the scoreboard for any kind of stats collection or monitoring, that'll kind of mess that up. Um, and basically all the speedy streams will be invisible to you because they're off on this other phantom thread pool that ModSpeedy is managing. Um, so that is unfortunate. So those are kind of the, the drawbacks I'm aware of with speedy, with mod speedy, I should say. Um, uh, but it mostly works, and uh, if, if those problems are not an issue for your site, it, it may well be worth a look. I, you know, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, so that's kind of it for mod speedy. If you have more specific questions about it in the question portion, I'd be happy to, to answer any of your questions. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more now about um, HTTP 2.0 before I finish up. Um, so as I mentioned, the ITF is working on HTTP 2 right now. They're uh, working out the specification for that. I don't really know what the timeline is, um, but it's, it's on its way. And uh, they're using speed as a starting point. So HTTP 2.0 is going to have all these speedy-like features, including, as I understand it, multiplexing. And so all these terrible issues and these terrible things that Mod Speedy had to do to get this to work at all, this is going to be an issue for HTTP 2.0, which uh, I assume Apache is going to want to support uh, natively, you know, once that is a standard. Um, so the question in my mind is, and, and you know, I hope some uh, sort of the Apache core devs are thinking about already, and I'd like to encourage you all to think about this uh, more, is, you know, as HTTP comes down the line, uh, how are we going to support that? 
And how are we going to support it well, uh, you know, without sort of these problems that, that Mod Speedy sometimes has? Um, but without having to, you know, rewrite all of Apache from scratch, which, you know, presumably we don't want to do, or have to rewrite all our existing modules from scratch because we change all the assumptions about how requests and connections relate to each other. Um, you know, how can we do this? Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have some ideas. I don't know if they're good ideas. I have not tried these. I don't know if they will work. Um, and uh, probably most of you, if not all of you, know a whole lot more about Apache's internals than I do. Um, but I'd like to humbly submit a couple of ideas here, at least to get people thinking, and um, you know, maybe some of you will have some better ideas than this. So in my mind, there's sort of two issues here with this multiplexing thing uh, you know, that we just went over, all the squirrely stuff we have to do to make it work. There's sort of two reasons why this is such a pain. The first problem is that uh, for a multiplex protocol like Speedy or HTTP2, um, we need a way to have multiple concurrent requests, whereby concurrent, in this case, I mean on multiple threads, right, because that's just the way Apache works. So we're going to have multiple requests simultaneously on multiple threads, but they all need to be associated with the same TCP connection. And the problem is, right, that all the existing modules are assuming that every request has its own dedicated connection that only that thread touches. So how can we deal with this? So one idea that's maybe a little bit out there is we already have this concept of sub-requests, what if we had this concept of sub-connections, right? This is basically what Mod Speedy is doing already, except it sort of legitimizes it. So my hypothesis here, right, is we'd have a sub-connection object, which is just a connection struct like any other, uh, but it would, you know, have a couple extra, you know, the connection struct would grow a couple extra fields, right? So a sub-connection would have an associated parent connection representing sort of the real TCP connection, uh, but it wouldn't have a socket. Uh, right, and so the core would have to be made aware of that so that it knows the socket might not be there if it's one of these sort of fake subconnections. Um, and then instead of a socket, the subconnection would sort of have a, you know, a thread safe bucket brigade or something similar to communicate back to the master thread. You know, again, sort of similar to what Mod Speedy is doing already. Um, the difference is what, what this fixes is um, each request still gets to have a dedicated connection object, right? So most modules don't even need to know there's anything different going on. They don't need to change. Uh, it's just that in some cases it might be sort of one of these fake sub-connections. Um, but by sort of, you know, making this part of the API, this gives us a legitimate way to associate multiple concurrent requests with one TCP connection. And the few places that would have to change are mostly going to be in the core, right? So the core needs to be where some connections won't have sockets, but instead have a, par a pointer up to this parent connection that's owned by another thread, and maybe some locking needs to be there. And then mod SSL needs to understand, you know, oh, a sub-connection that doesn't really connect to the network, uh, you know, if its parent connection is secure, then the sub-connection should be treated as secure. And the request that's associated, you know, the unique request on that sub-connection uh, should be treated as secure. So that's sort of one idea for associating multiple requests with a connection, basically sort of doing what Modspeedy is already doing, but in a much, you know, cleaner way that the core understands. And the second issue is this cooperation with the NPM, right, where, where Mod Speedy has to sort of be its own NPM, which is kind of gross, and gets much worse if there are other modules to support other multiplex protocols in the future. We don't want every single one of those duplicating this effort. So, you know, once we have this sort of idea of uh, additional requests on the same TCP connection, we need some way to run them concurrently that the NPM understands and is aware of. Um, the problem is that NPMs don't provide any way to do that, right? They have complete control over the thread pool. There's no way for some other module, as, I, as far as I know, to, to come in and say, hey, NPM, I want one of your threads. Give me. Um, so, solution. Provide that functionality. Give the NPM some kind of optional hook that would uh, allow other modules to do this. In particular, the idea here is the, uh, is, um, the other module would go to the NPM and say, here's a sub-connection. Please run this as though it's a real connection on one of your threads and do all the things you normally do. Um, so this is something threaded NPMs could do, I think, without too much difficulty. Obviously, prefork might not be able to do it. I mean, um, you know, unless we're using like IPC to communicate between connections and subconnections. Um, too bad for prefork. You know, again, that might be okay, um, especially as threaded NPMs seem to be becoming more common. Um, you know, but I don't know. I would appreciate your feedback on this uh, if this is a terrible idea or not. Um, but if we sort of did that again, that sort of solves this problem we had where you know, we're duplicating the effort. Now we're back to a point where the NPM is the only thing handling multiprocessing. It manages all the threads. Its scoreboard knows about all the requests that are going on. Um, but other modules still get a chance to, thanks, um, uh, to run these connections, run these other requests concurrently. Um, and, you know, new future protocols can 
protocol models can use this too, right? This doesn't just have to benefit, um, you know, mod speedy or even just uh, HTTP2. Um, and, uh, and we don't have to sort of duplicate this, this effort. Um, so if this particular idea or some other idea that accomplishes it, this, these kinds of things in a better way, um, if we can make that work, you know, what benefits that it, does that get us? Well, it would make mod speedy a whole lot cleaner, a whole lot simpler. Um, and of course, it would more, much more importantly than that, it would get, uh, give us the ability to support HTTP2 in the future, in the near future, uh, in a clean way. Um, but I think actually this, this kind of thing, allowing us to run sub-requests concurrently, basically, and associate them with the same connection, this could actually benefit other modules, I think, right? So we've already got, um, we already have a concept of sub-requests, but those run uh, basically in blocking fashion, right? Like everything stops while you handle the sub-request and then you go back to what you were doing. Um, and we've got existing modules like mod dir and mod include that possibly have to make multiple sub-requests and might get a whole lot faster if we could make those all in parallel at the same time and then resume once they all come back. Um, so mod dir and mod include use the sub-request functionality that might get better if that could be concurrent. Mod page speed uh, uses loopback requests and could benefit from this kind of thing. Um, in fact, if you use mod page speed and mod speedy together, they will hook into each other and mod page speed will use this mechanism. Um, so, but it would be great if, if that mechanism were part of core and all of these modules could use that. Um, so it would benefit a lot of existing modules. I think it would obviously be great for HTTP2. And, uh, you know, who knows? You know, I, I feel like anything that adds to the server new uh, abilities, you know, new flexibilities, just opens up more possibilities for modules in the future. Uh, you know, it just makes the Apache web server more powerful and more flexible, and I think that's a good thing. Um, so something to think about for the future as HTTP2 comes uh, down the line. But in the meantime, we have Mod Speedy. It works pretty well. Um, uh, give it a try. Um, uh, we've got binary packages up on developers.google.com slash speed. Uh, check out the open source product on Google Code. And if you do give it a try, um, I'd encourage you to join our mailing list, modspeedydiscuss at googlegroups.com, where we um, announce new releases and we can answer any questions you have. Um, so that's it for my slides. Can I answer any questions about Mod Speedy or Speedy or HTTP2 in general? Anyone? Yeah, do you want to come up to the mic? I think. Uh, just clarification. Did you say that if you if you're if your website is only running uh, in secure mode only, that mod speedy is not compatible. So, so mod speedy, I mean speedy in general, not just mod speedy. Speedy requires today um, that you're using SSL. So, if your site is secure, you're set. If you are not using SSL at all, if if you have no HTTPS portions of your site, then there's no way to use speedy uh, with any implementation. Does that clarify? Yeah. I've got a couple of questions on the, sure. for the, the server push you're talking about. Yes. Um, when it does, when it sends out the, the URIs to push, um, is there another round of access control checks on those before the content is sent or does it assume that it's okay? Yes. So, um, mod speedy, you know, right. So, um, when you tell Mod Speedy to push something, Mod Speedy basically acts exactly as though the client had actually requested that thing. So it just it just submits the request to Apache, and that goes through all the normal access control checks. Okay, so that, that should be okay. It should be okay. Yeah. And the other thing was, ha have you looked at seeing if it would work with with uh, event npm instead of uh, worker? Um, so I, I actually confess to not being very well versed in the event npm. But my understanding is that um, the event NPM sort of doesn't work, or rather, you know, doesn't, you can't get the NPM, event NPM's benefits if there are any uh, clogging filters in the chain. Is, I don't know, someone else in the audience probably knows much better than I do if that is correct. But modest SSL in particular uh, is a clogging filter, so I understand it. So I don't sort of really know any way to get, um, mod speedy to benefit from the event NPM, but I don't have a very solid understanding of it, and if anyone wants to come up to me afterwards and explain to me uh, how to do it, <laughs> or, or what I should be looking into. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm Roy Fielding, and we talked about briefly uh, in email, but um, I mean, most of this is understandable from the perspective of changing the minimum amount of Apache 
right. to get it done. Um, what are your feelings about joining the group and uh, actually working on an Apache 3 where we wouldn't have the restriction of not changing everything, you know, where you could change everything? Yeah. Um, that might be the right way to go. I, I think that's a decision for the, uh, you know, for the core developers. Um, you know, as, as much as I, the idea appeals to me potentially of sort of uh, becoming a major contributor to Apache, realistically, I don't have the time. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to have to mostly remain on the sidelines, uh, I think, and, uh, and leave it in their capable hands. Any other questions? Um, just, one, just one question. Um, sure. How much uh, thought had you given, or, or does the not this specific implementation, but Speedy in general, had you given to um, uh, SERP poll or uh, event-based uh, network layer? Since uh, it seems like Speedy is simultaneously playing layer five, layer six, layer seven, all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, you know, how much have you given thought? Because one thing you pointed out is that we don't really need to clog up five threads doing five requests if right. we're still blocking on two of those with like no request bodies sent right. yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I so mod speedy is the speedy implementation I'm most familiar with. Obviously, um, I think that most other implementations out there are probably working in more in a more event driven way. Um, I, I kind of feel like speedy lends itself much more naturally to that kind of approach. Um, unfortunately, that's not how. Uh, HTTPD was built because it was built for HTTP. Um, so I kind of, I don't really know what to do there. I mean, even mod speedy, if you send it 100 requests, it won't necessarily um, immediately put them on 100 threads, right? It will look at the priorities of the requests and it will, if its thread pool is, you know, only five threads or whatever, uh, you know, it will service the five most important things first and as those finish up, it will move on to the next, the next few. So it doesn't have to high, tie up huge number of threads. Um, and you know, it, meanwhile, those other streams are open and the client can send data to them, but it just buffers them until it's ready to take care of them. Um, uh, so you can manage how many threads you're using up. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially in situations where you get partway into, into uh, handling a stream and you wanna do blocking IO and move on to another stream, you know, this kind of massive parallelism is what you know, event-driven architectures are really good at. I have a question on, on uh, server push. Yes. Uh, so mod speedy will look at X associated content to determine what to push. Um, what's your thinking on who would write that? That is a great question. Um, and that is kind of an open question, even among uh, sort of the the speedy folks who are, you know, designing the protocol, which I'm not actually one of, but, you know, again, I talked to them. Um, so server push is a really interesting feature and it has a lot of potential, but it's still kind of an open question, what should be pushed? Um, because even though server push saves round trips, right, it does use up bandwidth that might not have been necessary if it turns out the thing is, the resources in the client's cache. Um, and by the way, if you start pushing something and the client says, oh, I've already got this in cache, they can cancel the stream and the server can, can quit what it's doing. Um, but in the meantime, you were still using up some bandwidth that maybe could have been used in a more efficient way. Um, so it's still very much an open question what the right strategy there is. And because I don't even know what the right thing is, you know, the capability is there, but it's kind of leaving it up to people to experiment with it and try to decide what the best thing is. Um, it would be great to have a module, either Mod Speedy or another module that just sort of was smart and figured out what the right thing to push was and made those decisions. Um, but I don't know what the right algorithm for that is, so, uh, so that doesn't exist yet. Um, in the meantime, you can kind of do it manually. Like, I mean, if you're writing like PHP or a CGI script or something that's generating response dynamically and you, you've done some testing and you're pretty sure for this page, you know, you should push such and such a resource. Um, you know, the idea with the X associated content header is hopefully it's pretty easy and, you know, again, in PHP or CGI or whatever uh, you're using to generate responses, it's hopefully pretty easy to just set a little header. Um, but it's, you know, for now it's kind of the thing that you have to do on a very case-by-case -case basis and that's unfortunate. It would be better to have a, uh, 
automatic solution that just knew what the right thing to do was. Yeah, I had a question about <clears throat> the connection streams and how they honor keep alives. It says speedy honor all that. Yes. So um, speedy in general, the idea is sort of the connection should just the, with speedy in general, not specific to mod speedy. The idea is sort of the connection should should actually stay open as long as both sides are willing, as long as possible, um, right? And this is actually one of the nice things about speedy is the connection stays open and not only do you have a warm TCP connection but you have a warm speedy compression context so you load one page and if the server is willing to leave that connection open uh, you know when the user navigates to the next page that's still open and warm and the connection context is primed and uh, and things are very fast for the next page um, obviously that's sort of a burden on the server to leave all these connections open and so uh, it's sort of up to the server implementation to decide you know what it's willing to do um, in terms of what mod speedy actually does um, uh, I'm actually not 100% sure off the top of my head, but I think it will pretty much leave the connection open as long as the client is still sending its stuff to it. Um, but if the, you know, if the page finishes loading and the user doesn't do any more navigation and the connection is kind of sitting idle with no speedy streams on it, uh, I, I think that um, the normal timeout mechanism will, will kick in and the connection will close. Um, but I'm actually not 100% sure off the top of my head. I have to go back and look at that. Um, but it's basically like an HTTP connection. As long as it's active, it stays open, and when the client stops using it for a while, then you drop it. Is that it? Thank you very much.